We chose this day because it's the anniversary of the birthday of Trudy Merrill. The anniversary. So that's how we lucked out having to get this beautiful day. Because she's sitting there right next, right next to Jesus. I could hear her talking to him. Uh, I, I got something I want to talk to you about. <laughs> Can you see her saying it? I, I need to talk to you about something right now. Could we just have a moment of silence in memory of Trudy Merrill? <laughs> on behalf of the family, Jeffrey Johnson is going to make some remarks. Jeffrey, come on up and make some remarks right now. On behalf of uh, the Johnson family, I, obviously I came here to thank everybody. But there was something I thought of earlier today. And it was a, I'm not going to say the whole thing. It was a poem that my mother had spoken about and had repeated on quite a few occasions. And actually it was a eulogy, but it, what it talked about was the dashes from the beginning to end of one's life. Obviously here, looking at everyone that I'm seeing here, my mother had many dashes. She, she affected a lot of people. Uh, she affected us as her family. She affected everyone that's here as friends, some as foes, but she affected us in a way that made us all want to somehow say thanks. My mother had a lot of great dashes, and this dedication alone shows one of, I think, the biggest dashes that, that she was able to imprint on her community. So on behalf of everybody, I'd like to say thank you for the Johnson Merrill family. Thank you. Now a couple things. That's gonna put a lot of pressure on all the rest of the, fam of, the, of the speakers. You see how Jeffrey was able to make his points in a very <laughs> quick way? So let's just give Jeffrey and the family a hand. Thank you, Jeffrey, for setting the tone. Now, there is one speaker that has no limits, and that's the boss, my friend Dr. Bruce Douglas. Now, I know a lot about Bruce, and I, I'd forgotten that we had this shared thing about the Civil War, so I gave him a yellow folder uh, that mainly is about me and, and my involvement with the Civil War, just so you know. <laughs> so I don't want to make this all about Trudy. Yeah, it's, yeah, we don't need to talk about that anymore, but he's got a folder. But the other thing is this. Dr. Bruce Douglas is the only person that I know that has a degree from every college in <laughs> Connecticut. It's unbelievable. Central Connecticut, uh, UConn, Trinity, uh, where else, doctor? Eastern. Eastern, whatever. <laughs> One of the great educators, the CEO of Crack. One of the best friends for education in the greater Hartford, Dr. Bruce Douglas. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to be here today. It's a real pleasure for me to be here, and I want to thank John for his introduction. Um, you know, uh, I have a lot of my Crec friends here today, and so I'm a little anxious when I speak in front of a group, but so I look to my Crec friends, and you give me comfort, and I'm glad that you're here. Um, you, you know, when I was in college, and I was a, a, an athlete, I was a wrestler, and when we would go into the big room where everybody was going to weigh in before um, the tournament, I would look around the room and wonder, do I belong in this room? Right? Do I belong among these people? And um, most often times the answer was, I don't think so. Right? I don't know for sure if I belong in this room. When I look across this room today, this is a very powerful group of people in this room right now. We should recognize that. Okay. Um, I haven't been among a gathering of people like this in a long, long time. Pardon me, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> I do go to the General Assembly now and then, but this group, <clears throat> this group, all right, is a very, very powerful group. And, you know, I'm thinking that I have some serious concerns about uh, the children I see in our schools. And I see a group like this, and I say that if if we don't make this, um, if we can make this more than just an occasion, but we can stick together, 
okay? We can do great things. Because I don't know if you're aware of it, um, but uh, we have a burgeoning crisis among our children in, um, at least in the correct schools. I can't speak for the Hartford schools, but in the correct schools, okay? Uh, we see <clears throat> more children disenfranchised, more children exhibiting neurotic behaviors, more children exhibiting antisocial behaviors, and it's startling what we're seeing. In, in fact, I would say uh, it's frightening in, in many cases. Um, we don't know how to react to it, okay? And that's why we decided that one of the things we needed to do, you know, with Eric's suggestion and the suggestions of other correct staff members, that we need to reach out to families and we got to go to the, we have to go to the neighborhood because not everybody can come to school every day. We have to be here on Saturday. We have to be here on Sunday. We got to be here Thursday evening at 9:30, and we have to work with our families because um, we're in an emergency now. Okay. Okay. It's not about in what we're going to do in five years from now and what plan we're going to put in place. It's about this moment in time. A child's life is about here and now. Right. And so that's why we've decided to uh, come together uh, with the help of the YMCA to um, open up this facility. And so, um, and so we should recognize this moment in time because um, in 15 years from now, there's going to be some 30-year-old young man who's going to say, this is where my life was turned around. Mm -hmm. And you're here at this moment, okay, when we are starting that. Okay? And we should not forget that. Because when that young man says that, you're going to be there and you're going to say, yeah, I was there. I was part of that. Okay? And so congratulations. Okay? We're here for a great moment. Okay? And great things are going to happen as a result of this. Okay? But we have to persevere. Right. And you know, I remember one time I was talking with Trudy about something and uh, she said to me, you know, it's all a matter of who you love the most, okay? Do you love yourself or do you love the children the most? Okay. Who is it? Okay. Is it your relevance? Is it your agenda? Is it what you hope to be? Or is it what you hope those children will be? And we have to be in that place now for our children because we have a mission and a crisis. Okay? And that mission is to overcome that crisis. Okay? Now, I've been in education for 44 years. It almost brings tear to my, tears to my eyes in that in that time, we've not made much progress. Okay? Um, you know, now when I look back on my career and I see the end of my career coming, I, I say to myself, um, you know, what was the impact? What, what was it all about? You know, um, is it better than when I arrived? You know? And I'm really worried that it's not better than when I, than when I arrived. Okay? And so I ask all of us in this room you know, to come together, um, stick together. Um, Eric is asking for your uh, emails and your contact information so that we can pull this group together to be a voice okay, for the children of this neighborhood and the families of this neighborhood. Because now, more than ever, okay, this, this, uh, this stuff has to stop. And our kids uh, need us to come and uh, take care of them and love them as we should. So now I'm going to go back on um, record. Okay, I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm often told don't speak ex extemporaneously in front of a large group, and that's true. Okay, so there's some people I need to recognize here. Senator Eric Coleman is here with us today. State Senator Doug McCory, my buddy, is here with us today. Matt Ritter is here with us today. Former Representative Marie Kirkley Bay is here with us. Mayor Cigar is here with us today. Uh, I just threw David Chappelle out. Uh, <laughs> way to go, Mayor. Way to go. Right. Sean Wooden, uh, uh, City Councilman, is here with us today. Steve Harris from the 5th District Town Committee is here with us today. James Morton, thank you so much, is, is here with us today. Clinton Hamilton, I can't thank you enough. I don't know where Clinton is. But Clinton, thank you so much. This would not happen if it wasn't because of you. Um, Andrew Woods, the CEO of the Hartford Communities That Care. Greg Stanton, the CEO from uh, Community Health Services. Uh, Trudy's family, thank you so much. Um, Adam Cloud, uh, city treasurer, who's the son of Sandy Cloud, who is a partner with Trudy in developing the uh, Project Concern program. Donald Brown from the 5th District Town Committee and uh, Mrs. Uh, Cynthia, Je uh, Cynthia Jennings, who is a city councilwoman. So <coughs> if I've missed anybody, um, 
I really apologize uh, for that. So on behalf of CREC, I want to thank you all for attending today's celebration. It's the opening of this CREC Family Resource Center and the honoring of this gentle but very strong warrior of a woman, Trudy Merrow. I want to especially thank the mayor, James Morton, and all the elected officials here today, and most importantly, the Merrow family. If I could thank Trudy directly, I can do it by thanking you. This center was envisioned to be a safe place and a welcoming place for our children, a place of learning and a place for support. A place where the connections are built between home and school and community. The center is the physical manifestation of Creck's <coughs> mission and Trudy Merrow's mission to ensure that all students have access to all the resources available in this region okay, to live a prosperous and safe life. The selection of this location was intentional. Uh, we sought a place that was central to the families we are dedicated to serving. We wanted to create a center that was more accessible to the families and that better accommodated their schedules rather than ours. Although today marks the unveiling of the first physical site of a Creck Family Resource Center, our agency, along with many other agencies like the Y, have provided resources for families throughout the city for many years. We know that our duty is to provide welcoming, safe, in, and an enriching place that starts the moment a child steps on the school bus, walks into the classroom, or enters the gym at the Y. Students and families rely on the valuable resources that this community and other community centers and the schools provide. CREC and the Y share the same desires for our families and our children. To have quality teachers, to have mentors, to qu have quality educational resources, tools and places where they can get the support that they need. CREC is collaborating with the Wilson Gray YMCA by contributing uh, CREC staff who will be located here permanently and providing access to our many academic and enrichment programs. These services will enhance the meaningful programs already provided by the Y at the Wilson Gray site. We want to attract every child in this neighborhood to this YMCA. This collaboration exemplifies the kind of relationships that should be formed throughout our region and our state. And these collaborations benefit our children, our children, our children. They benefit our families and they make both of our agencies stronger. Now that you know the mission, I trust you'll understand why this center will be officially known as the Trudy Merrow Creck Family Resource Center. Trudy Merrow was no stranger to community. She was no stranger to fighting okay, for what was in the best interest of children and families. As a co-founder of Project Concern, now known as the Hartford Region Open Choice Program, she believed in promoting equity through education. And she was right and she was successful. Trudy Merrow set an example for all of us. In her honor, we strive to continue to set an example for what is right and for what we know is right and for what we know is American. We strive to provide a great resource to the deserving families of this community. I'm humbled to have known Trudy and worked with Trudy and I'm proud to be part of an agency that promotes what Trudy so diligently worked toward. And now I'm duly honored to be a partner with the YMCA and an agency that has a long history in serving the best interests of children and families. So today we are standing on the shoulders of a giant, Trudy Mara. So we cannot fail, but we must prevail. Thank you so much. All right. Now, James Morton is our next speaker, and I have to tell you a story. I got a call a couple of months ago from uh, a dean at the Capital Community College who'd been there for many years. And he said, John, I just heard the best commencement speaker ever delivered at Capital Community College. And I said to him, I'm, I was touched. You replayed my commencement speech? <laughs> he said, no, John. I, uh, I just heard James Morton give a speech, and he was the best ever. I said, so where do I stand? He said, you dropped a number three. You're after Morton and the mayor. But ladies and gentlemen, the chairman, CEO of the Greater Hartford, YMCA, one of the greatest. Just sit down, James. I'm not through with you yet. <laughs> Do people know who's in charge? <laughs> now I said to the dean, 
what did he do that was so good? Because I'm a student. He said, he said, John, when you stand up and speak, you, you, you do a great job, but you only use your hands. He said, James Martin's got moves. <laughs> so James, I hope you brought your A game today. Not to put you under pressure. Ladies and gentlemen, James Martin. Um, but I am, going to, I am going to tell a story today. And uh, this was a story that I was asked to tell by, by, by Eric uh, Crawford, because um, I had shared it with him a couple of weeks ago. Um, and as I, as I look at the board here and we see the words true collaboration, um, it, it, it really uh, does um, kind of give you some insight into what this uh, story is going to be about. You know, this is a very, very exciting time uh, for all of us, uh, especially since our collective goal is to serve the best interests of the children and families uh, in this incredible community. Um, the opening of the Treaty Merrill Family Resource Center is a reality because there are many carpenters in this room. Um, um, so let me uh, illustrate what I'm talking about with a story. So once upon a time, there were two brothers who lived on adjoining farms. These two brothers fell into conflict with each other. Uh, it was their first serious rift in 40 years of farming side by side, sharing machinery, labor, goods, and services as needed without a conflict. Then the long collaboration fell apart. It began with a small misunderstanding that grew into a major difference that finally exploded into an exchange of bitter words followed by weeks upon weeks of silence. One morning, there was a knock at the older brother's door. He opened the door to find a carpenter at the door with his toolbox. The carpenter said, I'm looking for a, a few days of work and perhaps you have a few small jobs uh, here on your farm that I could help you out with. The older brother said, yes. I do have a job for you. He said, look across that creek at that farm. That was my neighbor's farm. In fact, that's my younger brother's farm. Last week, there was an open meadow between us. But my brother took his bulldozer to the levee, and now there's a river between us. Well, you know, I think he did that to spite me. And, but I've got one better for him. So you see that pile of lumber over there by the barn? I want you to build me a fence. I want you to build me an eight-foot fence. And uh, so the carpenter looked at the, the wood and got a sense of the situation. He says, I think I know what it is you, you need. I think I got a handle on the situation. So show me the nails in the post hole digger, and, and I'll, get, uh, I'll get busy with the job that I know will please you. Well, the older brother had to go to town that day, so he helped the carpenter pull the materials together, and off he went to town. The carpenter worked hard all day long, measuring, sawing, nailing, hammering. And about sunset, when the farmer returned, the carpenter had just finished the job. The farmer, older brother, with his eyes wide open and his jaw dropped, he looked at what the carpenter had built. There was no fence there at all. It was a bridge. A bridge stretching from one side of the creek to the other. A fine piece of work with handrails and everything. And the neighbor, his younger brother, was coming from the far side. He was coming from the far side with his arms stretched out. And the younger brother said to his older brother, you are quite a fellow to build this bridge after all I've said and done. The two brothers uh, stood at each end of the bridge and then they walked toward the middle and as they reached each other they shared a warm embrace. They turned to see the carpenter hoist his toolbox on his shoulder and the older brother said, no wait, no wait, please stay a few days. I've got, I've got some other jobs for you. And the carpenter said, I'd love to stay but I've got many, many more bridges to build. So that's the story about this collaboration. Um, you know, what we're supposed to do with the resources entrusted to us is we're supposed to be building bridges. And it's through those bridges that allows us to do really, truly meaningful work. And so who were some of the bridge builders 
that made this collaboration possible? Well, obviously Trudy Merrill uh, was the preeminent bridge builder, right? Um, she brought us all here today. Um, but who were some of the other bridge builders? Eric Crawford is a bridge builder. He's a carpenter. I. Charles Matthews is a bridge builder. He's a carpenter. Aurora Alvarado is a bridge builder. She's a carpenter. Clinton Hamilton is a bridge builder. He's a carpenter. Those are the folks, those four people, who were the brainchilds, the visionaries, and the activators that brought, brought these two organizations <laughs> together that gave us the opportunity to be here today to celebrate this wonderful uh, family resource uh, center. And so it's their leadership and their collaborative spirit that we should applaud. And you know, uh, nothing happens without graciousness. And I'd like to acknowledge the graciousness of the staff of the Wilson Gray uh, YMCA Youth and Family Center. I think our staff has been extremely welcoming of the Creck Resource Center here, the Trudy Merrill uh, Family Resource Center. Um, and they have embraced it um, like the visionaries embraced it. And so uh, a round of applause to those folks. A part of the staff here uh, in this or organization doing some some great work uh, a day day in and day out, and then I think um, we would be remiss if we also uh, didn't acknowledge Trudy Merrill. So thank you very much. So Ara Alvarado, you mentioned her. Uh, she talked. We went to lunch Tuesday, and she said, "John, you need to you need to up your game." Okay, she said, uh, "You might try a little alliteration." I said, a little what? Alliteration. Use the, you know, uh, the same letter over and over. It, it's just something people grab on. So I don't know if Aura's here, but I'm going to take her advice. Trudy Merrill was classy, charismatic, caring, courageous, collaborative. I'm going to pause now and wait for the applause to die down. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She was also determined, direct, directive. And when she wanted to be, she could be deaf. Isn't that the truth? If she didn't want to hear it, she didn't hear it. Isn't that right, man? Now, it's my pleasure to bring up the next speaker who the next four or five speakers need no introduction, so I'm not going to go to a long introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, the mayor of this great city, the Honorable Pedro Sagara. Um, I'm here in multiple capacities. Um, um, I'm a direct, very direct beneficiary of the work that Trudy Merrill did in this community. Uh, the first time I met Trudy, I was 17 years of age. I was at Capital Community College, and she came to speak on the role of the black woman in civic and political life in the community. And um, I had an interest in politics and political science. And I didn't see her during that time because I was in college, but then I started to see her again when she came to my home um, asking that I consider becoming the city's corporation counsel. I was 31 years of age, and I gave a long list to Trudy of all the reasons why I did not want to be corporation counsel. Uh, all of the sad and bad things that are associated oftentimes with politics. And she convinced me that all those reasons were the right reasons uh, to become involved and be in politics. Uh, I'm also the <laughs> beneficiary of a community to whom she has led, left a legacy of work uh, that was based on commitment, on sincerity, hard work uh, for all communities, for all communities. I think that those of us who got to know Trudy knew that she worked for the goodness and the betterment of the entire community. So I'm very appreciative. In my capacity of mayor, I want to thank Trudy, wish her a happy birthday, um, thank her for all she did, 
and to make a commitment that we should continue in her legacy of working together to build a better future, especially for someone that she cared very deeply about, and that was the children of this city. So thank you, Craig. Thank you, Y. I think to continue to have more collaborative relationships in this community will really help to speed up the pace so that we don't find ourselves here 30, 40 years from now lamenting that we didn't do everything that we could have done collectively to push our community forward. And to the Trudy Meadow family, I love you guys. And um, we miss Trudy, but we will always have her in our hearts. And if we continue to memorialize her good work and use her as a guide, as a vision moving forward, we'll be in good company all for many years to come. Thank you. My friend, my neighbor, your city council president, Sean Wooden. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Craig and the Y for this opportunity, invitation to participate. Um, you know, I feel like today when, when Eric talked to me about this, uh, Eric Crawford, I'm like, wow. All right, talk about a legacy. Talk about something that brings together what Trudy Merrill was all about with kids and right in the heart of our community. I mean, I, I can't think of a better, a better legacy aside from those of us, like the mayor, myself, others that she's touched, and there are so many of us. Um, and, and I am certainly a beneficiary of, of Trudy, uh, both at the front end of my life, uh, being one of the early participants in Project Concern, and you know, as I've described to some, um, I didn't, when I first met Trudy, I, I didn't realize her involvement and with that program. But for me, for my family at that time, that was, that was a, pivotable mo a pivotal moment for my parents having a choice, having something to say, we want something better for our kids in terms of an educational experience. And Crack, Trudy Merrill, and the others there at the beginning, they laid that foundation. And so I am very mindful of that. Um, and later in my life, uh, Trudy was there as well, uh, still teaching, molding, scolding, <laughs> um, all the things. But consistent through that was, was her vision about kids, the future, tomorrow. And what are we going to be about? And so, so this this is just wonderful. Um, you know, as it relates to education, we talk a lot about a lot about teachers. We talk about the classrooms. We talk about the schools. Um, one of, one of the big pieces is about what happens after you get out of school. What happens in the community? In the classroom, you can't do it alone, right? So, so Bruce, James bringing this collaboration together to provide that resource. And I know, I mean, my parents did their best to get out to Manchester, but it was hard. It was hard to, to fully be engaged and, and to engage. And, and a lot of the parents, they, they, don't have, they don't have a vehicle necessarily to do that. They don't have, and so, so bringing this in the heart of our community um, and having such a great testament to a wonderful, wonderful uh, leader, visionary, activist, uh, and compassionate woman. Uh, I'm truly blessed to be a part of it, and thank you, and thank you to the, to the family. About seven or eight years ago, I was living in Burlington, Connecticut. It's a suburb of the suburbs, about 20 miles out. <laughs> and my name got bandied about to be a candidate for mayor of Hartford. <laughs> and I'm living in Burlington. Don't, don't everybody relax. I, I have no intention of running. And really I got nervous. <laughs> and I got a call on a Sunday afternoon, I'll never, remember, I'll never forget it, from my dear friend, Doug McCrory. And he said, John, I have a message from Trudy. Now, how many of you have heard that message and got a fear in your heart? <laughs> I have a message from Trudy. And I said, uh, okay, Doug, what's the message? Trudy says, get an apartment in Hartford. I said, there is no way in the world I am going to leave my big white house in the suburbs and get an apartment 
in Hartford. He said, oh, okay, all right. That's it, he hung up. I'm at work in the morning, 10 o'clock, I get a call. John, this is Trudy. I said, hello, Trudy. She said, John, I've done some research. I've made a few calls. So, at lunchtime or after work, you go to such and such a place and decide which one of those apartments you're gonna take. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you right now, I manned up, and I'm gonna tell you right now what I said. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> So I got there thinking I could take the cheap one-bedroom apartment, and when I got there, the leasing agent said, well, Trudy call, uh, and we've already drawn up this lease agreement for this, uh, 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 this penthouse apartment, and so I signed it. But my dear friend, who brought me a message from Trudy, State Representative Doug McCrory. Uh, so, you know, everybody knows Eric and I go way back you know, since college. And so when he told me, he actually, he texted me yesterday, are you coming? Because you didn't respond. I said, yeah, I'm coming. I, you, know, I'm, you know I'm gonna be here. He didn't tell me I had to say something or speak. I just <laughs> thought I was gonna give the okay, citation. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, anyway, it's not that season, so I'm not primed up yet. But this is what I wanna say. First of all, first I wanna give my condolences to the to Trudy's family, because I was not able to make it to the funeral. I got stuck on vacation you know, and missed the flight. But, um, so I want to give my condolences to you. Um, John is right. So I got to know Trudy when I ran for office uh, for the first time. And after I, I won, people was telling me, I have to go meet this woman, Miss Trudy Miller. I heard the name, but I, you know, you know how it is. So I go, and you, you guys know the story, you go in the kitchen, you, you sit in a chair, and the conversations just flow. And we used to talk for hours. I mean, hours at a time. The family know they used to see my car there, and I'm sure you saw all kind of politicians' car there. But her and I connected in a way, and she said, "I know about you. You're the educator." I was like, "Yep, that's you know that's what I do." She said, and I'm, I'm gonna be brief. She just said, "You have to be a voice for our community." And she always pushed me and pushed me. And if you guys ever see me at the Capitol, you understand where it comes from. Because she'll call and say, I saw you last night. <laughs> you did a good job, but we need more. So therefore, when I see more, it, it doesn't shock me. It doesn't shock me that um, Craig the institution, the organization that I work for, and I will say, and I don't say this often, I am proud to work for Craig and Bruce Douglas. I'm not gonna put him on the spot right now, but let me tell you something. Whenever I pick up the phone and I'm calling him, and most of it has nothing to do with education, he always come through for our community. Listen to me. When I call him, he comes through all the time and doesn't ask questions because he know what I'm doing is for the benefit for our community. And this is another example. James just been in town for a couple years. Outstanding guy. I've connected with him. He is cre creating an umbrella of organizations that will work to promote positive outcomes for the people who live in our community. And Trudy was that type of person. She always had community first. It was all about the community coming first. I'm, I love the fact that I had the opportunity to share my 10, 12 years with her. And you guys sharing her with us. She was a visionary. This organization that I work for and the leader of it is a visionary. We're going to, we have to, turn this educational system in this state around. We have to do it. No one else is gonna come in and do it. Bruce can't educate all the kids. Harper has to get on board. Bloomfield, Windsor, every LEA in this state has to get on board and be true to themselves and look at what they're doing and see if what they're doing is something that 
Trudy would want done. Because she wanted justice, righteousness, and a positive education for all children, starting back, like you said, when Project Concern was started. We talked about that for years. And sometimes we disagree. We disagree. And sometimes you would disagree with her, but it's okay. So anyway, my two minutes is up. Uh, where you at, big guy? Big up. Thank you guys for coming out. Come back again. Enjoy yourself. Come on up, Georgette and uh, Senator Coleman. And I'm going to be talking while y'all making your way up here. Just come on up. Just stand right over here for a minute. Where is Georgette? She has a size. It's right here. Uh, yes. Come on, Georgette. She left. She's left? All right. Well, in that case, Senator, we're going to ask you to present this citation to uh, Eric Crawford on, be on behalf of Craig. I don't get to say anything? You are my senator. Let's get that straight. You have unlimited time, up to two minutes. Um, what I have to say, I can think. I think I can say within two minutes. And the first thing I want to do is to commend uh, Bruce Douglas and Crack and James Morton and the Wilson Gray YMCA uh, for this collaboration. Uh, I think it's something that is. Uh, as has already been alluded to, is very necessary. Uh, I want to thank uh, the mayor and uh, commend the city's involvement uh, in this particular project. Trudy uh, is a person who uh, placed a great deal of emphasis on family and community, and especially children. So I think it's very fitting that this Family Resource Center is being named uh, in her memory. Um, what Doug had to say is just so very familiar to myself and I think to all the other politicians in the room. When I think of Trudy, I think of tough love. Uh, and I think of uh, sitting in that seat, almost eye level with this image. Uh, it's so reminiscent of uh, my visits to her home and trying so hard uh, thinking that I've worked very hard on a particular issue or a particular project and she said, uh, you can do better. You can do better. Until uh, about a year or two ago, when I led the debate in the Senate on the repeal of the death penalty, and she said, you did a phenomenal job. And it was like, <clears throat> for me, it was like the child who had worked continually for the approval of his parents. And that approval was finally granted. And so uh, I'll conclude and make my presentation. But before I do it, I want to thank uh, the Johnson family so, for so very willingly sharing uh, Trudy with the rest of us and this community. And so uh, I can actually read this now. I got a new pair of glasses, and it's a. a Official citation from the Connecticut General Assembly introduced by uh, Senator John Van Ferrer of the 1st Senatorial District, Senator Eric Coleman of the 2nd Senatorial District, Representative Brandon L. McGee, uh, Representative Minnie Gonzalez, Representative Angel R.C., Representative Matt Ritter, Representative Edwin Vargas, and Representative Douglas McCrory. It reads, be it hereby known to all that the Connecticut General Assembly hereby offers its sincerest congratulations to the Trudy Merrill Crack Family Resource Center in recognition of a woman who truly demonstrated outstanding leadership, dedication, and selfless service to our community. A woman whose life had a tremendous impact on those who knew her. The honor bestowed upon Trudy is truly merited. Resource Center's mission to provide uh, passion, professionalism, and perseverance in the classroom will ignite learning in our children for generations to come and stand as a testament for what Trudy stood for. Congratulations and best wishes. The entire membership extends its very best wishes on this memorable occasion and expresses the hope for continued success given this sixth day of September 2013 at the State Capitol, Hartford, Connecticut. It is signed by Donald E. Williams, Jr., President Pro Tem, uh, Brendan, J. Brendan Sharkey, Speaker of the House, and Denise Merrill, Secretary of State.
Trudy was a fellow Virgo. Could all the other Virgos just raise your hands? Get out of here. And I also happen to know that tomorrow is uh, another fellow Virgo's birthday. Sean Wood's mother Fern's birthday is tomorrow, isn't that right? Yes, indeed. Yes. Yeah, so happy birthday to Fern. Now, I know Judy and Fern were good friends, and so, fellow Virgos, I'm giving a party on my birthday, September 11th, Dark Street Tavern, 6 o'clock. No, I am. And then you're all invited, and it's a scholarship for Hartford U Scholars. 6 o'clock, 911. We did not let them take away our birthday. Okay. Applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Craig has done a great job of taking a 60-minute video and trimming it down to two or three minutes. It's a very touching tribute to Trudy Merrill and her work with Project uh, Choice, and we're going to now uh, view that video right now. There was a study, the Harvard, the Harvard report, I call it. It was a Harvard report and town meeting of tomorrow. It was it was sponsored by the Chamber. Of Commerce. Now it's called the uh, Greater Hartford Alliance. The Chamber of Commerce then had a lot of, of participation by a group called the Bishops because a lot of the corporate offices were here. Very powerful group. And a part of it was about education. And Dr. Plant, of course, worked with the Department of Education. I worked then with a group called the Department of Community Affairs, which was a state agency with community affairs. And I was assigned to work with Sandy and come up with, with something. We, we, Commissioner Saunders, you know, we worked with him. We worked with the bishops who helped quite a lot. And we finally, the Commissioner agreed, Commissioner Saunders. It's a courageous stand in those days because uh, it's difficult for some people to understand how, how courageous an act it was on the part of some of the leadership, plus on the part of those five superintendents who agreed to meet with us and discuss it. And that's where it all took off. And one of the things that we, that was very important to, to me, Sandy and I, we were planning at public hearings. I didn't want a law, because I'm from South Carolina. I went to segregated school. And so, basically, when, when a school system desegregated, I was a part of a, a group that went. So, in a, a way, a lot of it was taken from that and the benefits of it, and how I benefited from it. But. A law, you can't legislate hearts, and so let people decide. And you find out how many good people there are out there. When they're allowed an open discussion, and, and they decide. And they decided to go with it. And it expanded from there. Where I was competing against a bag of kids from all walks of life. I guess they were all religions. And, and, and it, I, that helped me grow. Isolation is not good for anyone. Sandy and I had already decided that in any classroom, there would be no less than two, no more than three of our children. And there were studies done by John Hopkins University, and I, I, I imagine some of them are still around because it tested certain premises about speech patterns. When you're bombarded with another, everybody in early childhood, they say that, remember it was K through fifth grade, and, and everyone knew that, that, that kids learn from their environment. So if I'm in another environment, I begin to take on the characteristics speech patterns, oh, everybody does their homework, I'll do my homework, do you know? Because we all want to be, they talk about we're all social beings, well, give me a chance to be. And that's what it did. It only allowed some of the principles that have existed for a long time 
that uh, down at Yale, you know, the guru of early childhood was saying that kids need to be in an environment and they begin to take on the characteristics of that environment. That's all we wanted for the kids. Mr. Cloud, if you could just let Sandy know that we played this. I talked to him yesterday and he couldn't make it, but but thank you for being here on behalf of the Cloud Flat family. I'm going to ask uh, Bruce Douglas to come up and make a presentation to the family. I'm going to ask the two sisters in white to come up, uh, Winnie and Sarah. Come up and, and accept this on behalf of the family, Winnie and Sarah. We all know that he lines up for the kisses, right? <laughs> so we have this plaque, you know, for the family, and we also have one that's going to be uh, in the um, in the room where the children are going to come for um, their assistance, and we're going to introduce every child who comes here to this plaque. Okay, and so this beautiful. That, that was a beautiful video, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so if you all would like to have a copy of that video, right, because I think all the kids in our schools are going to see that video. Right? If you'd like to have a copy of the video, contact us and we'll give you a copy, okay? So it says here, in honor of Gertrude Trudy Johnson Merrow, September 6, 2013, a child should be able to dream to dream of an education which brings a job, a home, and then provided with the tools to realize that dream. From Crack and Excellence in Education. Thank you so much. Good. My handlers are talking to me. <laughs> I mean, I thought I'd been done pretty good. What do you think? Thank you, thank you. Well, y'all just, just sit down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reverse things just, uh, just a little bit. Uh, before, we, before we leave, though, uh, could every, it, it's been a long, long program, and we're about to bring it to a close, but could everyone just sit up straight for a minute? Just sit up straight for a minute. <laughs> sit up straight. Okay, everybody sitting up straight now. I want you to all, even those of you who are standing, to follow my directions. All right, move this way. This way, Cloud. <laughs> move this way. Back to the center. When people ask you about how this ceremony was, I want you to tell them it was moving. <laughs> Okay, thank you. You can steal that, James. You can steal that. You can steal it. In a few minutes, we're going to move again. We're, in a few minutes, we're going to move into the hallway, but before we do that, uh, and the, I want you to make a room in front of the door, and I want the family to be real close, and I want the elected officials to be real close. And Matt, I want you to be right up front. And uh, I'm going to ask you to make some brief remarks as somebody's cutting the, the ribbon. So start thinking about what you're going to say. All right. Is that enough notice? OK, fine. For closing remarks, I'm going to ask Eric Crawford and Clinton Hamilton to, as they used to say, come to us in their own way. Oh, you kids don't understand that. Come on. <laughs> All right, well, even uh, I'm gonna keep this short and brief, but um, I think. Thank what, you. Uh, yes, thanks. <laughs> time out, John. Time out. No, uh, I think our fierce leaders have done a great job talking about education and building bridges, and I think that's one of the things that we're doing and working with Craig. So we're definitely excited about this opportunity and look forward to it. And we definitely welcome the Trudy uh, family to come to the Y and you know join and 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 accelerate 
with us. So thank you. We'll be here. <laughs> now I have a Trudy story here also, but I'll wait till the end. But first I'd like to introduce the staff of the new Family Resource Center, the Trudy Mayor <coughs> yeah, Resource good. Center. We have Dana here. Stand up that question. Yeah. Megan Hartman, Kyra, and where's uh, Christina? I can't pronounce her last name. She just started working about it. Okay. <laughs> she's, she's the glue of the whole operation. She keeps me organized and keeps me focused. So she's like riddling to me. So she's a good person. When we first thought about this concept of having a family resource center, I went to Bruce Douglas. And Bruce, if you ever sat down with Bruce, the last sentence says, we could do more and we could do better. And I said, Bruce, we put these kids on these buses and we drop them off at these beautiful schools. Great teachers, great resources. Just one, our correct schools are the best schools. And I know you're here, Gwendolyn, for the Board of Ed. <laughs> we got the best schools. <laughs> so, so I said, Bruce, our issue is, what do they do after school? And we know if the house isn't balanced, the kid won't be balanced. And so we got to do a better job of balancing these households. And it's not all the time about giving the kid a laptop, giving them pencil, giving them paper. Some of these parents are struggling. It's a shame when you can look out the window and you see the condition some of these people are still living in because they're undereducated and underemployed. So I said, Bruce, I want this Family Resource Center to be just that, working with kids and families. Because they can't teach their kids if they don't know what to teach their kids. And that's what we're all about, and that's what Trudy was all about. And I remember Trudy about maybe four or five years ago. We're out at an event. And I didn't know Trudy that well. I, you know, we had a few conversations in passing, and I was scared to death of Trudy. And I'll tell you the truth. I was scared of Trudy, because I knew what she was about. So she sat there and she says, here, I've been watching your career for a while. See the things you're doing in the news, I said, thank you. I said, thank you, Ms. Merrill. No, I'm really polite, thank you. That was great just to get out of here. <laughs> and she says, she looks up, eyes open, she says, when are you gonna get off the bench and get in the game? I said, huh? Because she knew I played basketball. She said, when are you gonna get off the bench and get in the game? I said, I thought I was in the game. I thought I was doing this. She said, you could do a lot more. You could be a voice. You could create things. I read about some of the things you've done. You could do more. And I remember, I, I tell you, when we opened this and Trudy was alive when we thought about this concept, and when we heard that she passed away, I called Bruce Douglas, 30 seconds. <coughs> Bruce Douglas says, yes, within two seconds. He says, no brain. We're gonna be the best family resource center. We're gonna put, we're gonna do non-traditional things. We're gonna do things education haven't seen yet with parents. And I said, okay, we're gonna do that. And he says, you got the full support of CREC. People don't understand that CREC is more than just educating kids. We're here to add value to the community. And we need to be among our people. When I come to work every day, it's like working from home. That's what it's like. It's like working from home. I mean, you guys work from home. I could come here, shower, take a shave. <laughs> but believe it or not, work out a little bit. It's like working from home. I'm among my people. And it's, it feels so good to be here. It's, it feels so good to be here today because I got my community people, Steve Harris and company, and I got my credit people. It gets no better than this. But we must. We must continue to work together. And I appreciate Clinton. You know, I'm a product of the Y. I live in this place. I see the things they do with families and kids. I want to be a part of that. There was no other place I considered, but I just had to figure out how do I get in. Then I run into Ice Child. <laughs> you know, it's always a great deal, I chat. Don't do it, don't do it, Eric. You know? Yeah. But you know what? He's been he's been extremely supportive in making this happen. And we're not gonna let our community down. 
I need all you guys. Can't be just about crack. Can't be just about the why. That's why I ask you for all your emails. Keep your breath on what's going on with this session. And don't be afraid to stop by. Hey, Adam, come by and do a financial literacy group. Um, Cindy, come do someone love uh, law and government. Stop by. This is home. Because when you see our room, we have a big table. And everybody know about the table at Tootie House. That's where it goes down. That's about business. And that's why our office is designed the way it's designed. Tribute to that wonderful woman. So with that, appreciate all you guys coming out today. We got a lot of work to do. And at this time, we'll turn it back up to the little guy. So thank you. <laughs> I got this. I got this. I got this. Bruce, I hope this is okay. I, I just need to deal with this. <laughs> Earlier when Bruce talked, he talked about... Stand up, Bruce. Come up here by me. <laughs> Earlier when Bruce stood up, he talked about him being a wrestler. <laughs> Sit down, Bruce. <laughs> You're probably wondering, well, what sport did I excel in? <laughs> a lot of you don't know. I Not used late. to be a basketball player. <laughs> I was a sitter on a team. And my dream, I remember this. That was I, girls, yes. I was a sitter and the game was tied. And people said, get the ball to the big guy. Get the ball to Motley. Yeah. <laughs> And they did. Yeah. And then the other team took it away. <laughs> and then at the other end of the game, at the other end, I went up and blocked a shot. <laughs> and they won the game. <laughs> I blocked a shot in my dreams. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a moving ceremony. And we're now going to move. Again, I want the family right up front. Follow family lead first. Matt, you want to say a few words? Before we, uh, I want to say cut well. <laughs> I'm excited to see the beautiful room and the family deserves this. She was a wonderful woman. So let's get on with it and cut this room. All right, he's going to get it. So we get a shot with Eric and all the elected officials in front of the. Uh, Cynthia. Cynthia. Oh, <laughs> now, I know Andy publishes it, so I always <laughs> Everybody's last right here on that.